What's up? This is Bri Elise, and you're listening to Ambiance Podcast. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Ambiance Podcast. Sitting to the right of me, I got Brie Elise. She's a photographer based in Los Angeles. We cheered already, but let's cheers. Let's yeah, get a cheers yeah, again really we quickly. Hit it off right, you know? Cheers to 2020. Blessings, prosperity. Yes, health. We, we off the wine tonight. Um, it's a Friday night. It's a Friday night, right? Is it Thursday? No, it's, no, no, it's Friday. Friday. You're yeah, right, it's Friday. It's Friday, it's Friday night. Friday. Sometimes, like, I don't even remember because all the days just be blending together because life is so crazy right now. It's just right one now. big, long day. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Especially nowadays, like, it's just long days and they all mesh together. Um, so, are you, a, are you a big wine girl? You like wine? You know what's crazy is my friends just started putting me on wine. Oh, really? I was never a wine type of girl, but... Um, I was just like, I can't do this hard liquor no more. <laughs> I'm getting older. I can't hang. Like, I mean, I can hang, but like the hangovers just hit different oh, when yeah. you're older. You know, most definitely. You need like two or three days of recovery. Yeah, nowadays. for sure. When after a drunk night, I'm like <laughs> out. I'm not texting nobody. I'm not going out. I'm staying <laughs> yeah. in bed. I'm laying on my couch. Don't talk to me. Like, um, how, how many how many drinks does it take to get Brie drunk these days? Man, you know what? Probably a lot. Because, really? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Probably a lot because, um, I mean, I'm not an alcoholic, but I could drink, you know? Yeah. But um, I kind of slowed down. That's one of my goals this year is to not drink as much. Mm -hmm. um, it, always, actually, it's, it always starts off that way. Oh, yeah, for sure, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I went a whole month without drinking, actually. Oh, and then shit. When, when my month mark hit, I was like, give me some wine. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just craving it? Yeah, I'm like, give me some wine. You know what? I went to a... I, I'm similar to you like I started getting to wine recently as well and I went to like a few wine tours and I realized I've been drinking wine the wrong way my entire life until I went to that wine tour so a couple of things like the way you drink the wine affects how it tastes oh what? so yeah let's get into it real quick right. a little wine 101 <laughs> right so dark wines usually red oh, wines pick up my yeah, yeah pick up your wine we'll, we'll do a little a little uh a little tour wine 101 if you're if you're listening watching take notes um, when you drink something dark, usually if it's any alcohol, you want to put your head down after you drink it, um, because okay. the way it goes into your throat, pause, <laughs> matters. Like, <laughs> if, if that's like what's going to make okay, it taste different. Pause. So, so let's do a quick test. So take uh, a sip of it. We got to hold it like this too? Uh, actually, so yeah. So you're supposed to hold the wine by the stem by because the stem. if you hold it like this, your your body temperature heats up the wine and it affects the taste. What? Yeah. So that's it's the first thing. It's real science thing. to mm -hmm. this. It's that's real science. Crazy. Yeah. We'll get into some more, but like, so you hold it by the stem. Stem. If you so we'll we'll drink it the wrong way first, so you can see the difference. So All right, take so take a this. sip and then throw your head back when you sip it. Like I'm just at my house. Yeah. How it's, I usually drink it. <laughs> exactly. So, like, if you taste it, it's probably going to taste like a little, maybe a little vinegary. Now, we're going to taste We're gonna t taste it the right way. So, we're going to take a sip. And then, when you taste it, put your head down and then, and then swallow the, the wine. All right. Let's do it. Let me know if you, if you notice, like, any difference. Dan, you know what? I think I did. You did? I think it tastes a little more sour when I put my head down. Yeah. But, like, not a, like a nasty sour. Like, it's just more of a tasteful, like, sip. You yeah, know? you taste the, the flavors of the actual wine. There's a way bigger science to it. Like, I'm probably explaining it, like, not how it's supposed to be, but it's a little right. little, tidbit a little key for you. points. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Hope you guys took notes. Right. Anyways, let's get into it. Um, so, Brie. During, I'm really curious to know, like during these times right now, how are you, how has COVID affected you as like a freelance photographer? Well, you know, thankfully, and I'm very grateful that uh, it didn't really affect me. I feel like if anything, it pushed me. Mm. Um, it made me learn things that I never knew. Like I really had to do my research on stuff. You know, YouTube University. <laughs> yeah. Shout out them. Mm -hmm. um, but it just pushed me to my limits. You know, and yeah. I and I did a lot of great things that I could never forget about. Right. Um, so I can't say anything bad, really. You know, about yeah. the COVID situation. Like I'm very grateful and blessed that it's actually taken me further in my career rather than keeping me still or me, you know, going below that. How how did it take you further in your career? I mean, I did some music videos this year or last year, I should say. Mm. Um, I had a lot of interviews, never, you know, I didn't experience a lot of those things. Um, and just learning. I think that's mm -hmm. my biggest thing is just learning, you know, being on 
being able to like control a camera doing video stuff because i'm strictly a photographer yeah you know um but having to learn how to use a camera video wise was very difficult for me how right. you're learning how to use a stabilizer like what is that right <laughs> yeah. what, like what who mm -hmm. uses that yeah i didn't know that was a thing you know yeah um but yeah i would just say in those ways like it, it really did help me a lot so it allowed you to kind of tap into other yeah, talents exactly. creatively yeah they're able to use that's dope yeah. so I, I guess you could kind of say that you adapted to what happened rather than like let it defeat you mm -hmm. right yeah i mean because when all this happened at the beginning of the year i was like what am i gonna do mm -hmm. you know As a i'm like what am yeah. i gonna do everything's gonna be shut down who knows how long this is gonna be everybody's scared of course mm -hmm. and i'm like what am i gonna do yeah. You know, that was all I had in my mind. Because at the time, were you touring with Kal with Kalani? No, we weren't on tour, actually. We were about to go on tour. We were supposed mm. to. Um, and that just completely shut out. I think we were go supposed to be gone for like a good like nine months to a year or something like that. Yeah. Was, wow. I think it was like nine months, but there was a lot of breaks in between, maybe like two or three day breaks. Yeah. Um, but we were supposed to be gone for a minute and that was supposed to be, be in the beginning of the year. And then COVID hit. And wow. everything got canceled. So everything you had planned basically yeah, went down exactly. the shithole. So and that you know I was planning for that. Like I was like you know 2020 I'll be we going on tour. Like we yep. gotta be out here traveling. So that was really the only thing that mine was focused on. Um, my mind was focused on in tw uh, 2019. Right. You know, so when 2020 hit, I didn't have no plans. I was just like, dang. Like, yeah. What so, now? So as a freelancer, talk about the importance of like diversifying your income, right? Because. I'm sure when COVID hit, like a lot of freelancers were basically like shit out of luck. Mm -hmm. So what are some, some different ways that you can diversify your income as a photographer? Selling prints. Okay. You know, so mm -hmm. you can sell prints online. You could, uh, are we talking about during COVID while COVID is going on or we're just overall in general? Yeah. While, while COVID is here. Okay. So while COVID, I mean, dang, that's a tough question. Like, <laughs> really? I, uh, yeah. I feel like it's tough. Like for me, Again, like it was just always photography. Mm -hmm. So the only other way that I thought of making money was just selling prints. Okay. If I can't go out and physically shoot somebody because people are scared at this time. Yeah. You know, people don't want to meet with people. Mm -hmm. so, and not only that, but like everything was shut down. Studios, peer space, like studios, yeah. like things were shut. Where are we going to go shoot? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and I didn't live out here at the time. I lived in back home in Marietta, which is like an hour and 30 from here. That's true. There's not really yeah. much work out there exactly. anyways. That's like a place you go when you're ready to settle down with your family type you yeah. know like you don't want to live out there so and, and that's the scary part about freelancing is like the security part of it right because oh yeah like 100%. nobody saw this coming so it's nobody. just like how do you prepare for something like this as a freelancer it's right. it's hard yeah for sure i mean i definitely wasn't prepared i never thought this would ever happen mm -hmm. ever yeah <laughs> like i'm like what so i mean that's as far as you know making money um other ways with photography i'm just gonna have to say and maybe there's something i'm missing and if there is you know Comment below. Comment below. Let me know <laughs> so I know next time if this ever happened again. Yeah, but, um, Adder. I'm just like selling prints. You yeah. know, or maybe doing online classes. You could do online true. classes for sell sure. Sell presets. Yeah, sell presets, online classes, all, you know, digital stuff. But I think there's definitely ways to do it. We just got to be creative and figure it out. You yeah, know? And probably network too. Yeah, with networking like, too. A lot, of, a lot of fellow photographers and whatnot. Oh, yeah, for sure. But again, it's like we can't even link up. Yeah, that's you know? true. So we can't even link up. We can't mm -hmm. do that then. But I guess like you, you gotta stay ready then, like and just save up just in case some shit like this happens again. Yeah, I mean, my thing was like I'm just gonna go day by day. You know, okay. things popped up for me, and at this point, I'm like, you know what? Like, why am I gonna worry? Why am I gonna stress? Like, I just feel like. Uh, you know, again, this is like a, a place where I, I feel blessed that I'm able to say that, that I can just, I'm just going to take it day by day. You yeah. Know? And I kind of just let things come to me um, as opposed to me going to them because I knew everything was shut down. And this is my full time job. Yeah. So I, what could I do? Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a blessing, like you said, yeah. to to be able to be in a situation yeah. to let things come to you because exactly. a lot of other people can't say the same. Yeah. For you know what sure. I mean? But at that same time, all the hard work that you were putting in before this pandemic set you up to be in that oh, situation, yeah. 100%, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. If it wasn't for what I've done in my past, I wouldn't have had any of the opportunities I've had during the pandemic. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that, too, you uh, know? Yeah, so so let's, let's touch on that. Your past, when did you first start 
your journey in photography and when did you first start even thinking about it? Wow. Who? Well, how old was I when I was a sophomore? <laughs> Probably like 15 or right? 16, yeah. something like I'm that. like, how long ago was that? Um, that was a good, like 11 years ago. Wow. Um, I actually got started because my neighbor, uh, she took a... She stole a camera oh, from shit. our camera class. Yeah, but uh, I was in a camera class for one semester, I believe it was. And um, she stole a camera, came home, and we were neighbors. Like, we're right next door to each other. So we used to kick it on the daily, you know? Yeah. And so she would be like, girl, or she came to me one day, and she was like, girl, I got a camera from camera class. And I'm like, oh, shoot. She's like, I'm starting making money with it. And I'm like, money with it. Okay, yeah. She's like, I'm starting taking pictures for some money. Okay. I'm like, okay, girl, go ahead. You know, go ahead. You know get what? I like money. that because some, most people will be like, I'm going to just sell it. But yeah, she's like, I'm going to. Exactly. Okay. She's like, I'm going to make some, you know, bread. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. So I had thought about it and I was like, wait, like, my dad has this Canon. I don't remember which one it was. It was an old one. Like, it's not, there's not no screen on the back or nothing of it. So yeah. I'm like, he has this camera. I could do the same thing. So then I picked up the camera and I just started doing photo shoots for $50, not knowing what I'm doing. I just have it on the automatic setting and I'm just <laughs> click, click, click. And then I used to edit my photos on picmonkey.com, one by one by one. And um, then I just realized after high school, like I had got a job and like I got fired from it. I worked there for a year. I was like, working at a thrift store um. and... Um, I got fired and my friend introduced me to The Secret. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to watch it. You is that love the book? It. Like turned in, I've, I've seen The Secret, a book, there but is turned a book. into a, is that, was that turned into like a movie? Uh, it's a documentary. Yes. Okay. You have to watch it. I know you would, you would love it. Why? What, what is it about? It's just about manifesting and law of attraction. And oh, just, you yeah. know what? I've, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen like a snippet of it. Yeah. You got to watch it. It's like a good mm -hmm. hour and some minutes, but you'll like it. You'll definitely get inspired, but that's what inspired me. Okay. So... Um, my friend was like, I won the lotto. I won the lotto. I'm like, girl, you don't even know what lotto. What, what, what you mean you won the lotto? And she's like, yeah, girl, I won the lotto. And I'm like, dang, that's crazy. Like, let me see the money, you know? And she's like, no, girl, you got to watch The Secret. It's on Netflix. Da, da, da. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get oh. a try. So when I got fired, I watched that, that documentary. And it just inspired me. Like, my whole mindset just completely changed um, to... Well, obviously for the better, but like really to, to chase my dreams. That was the, the thing for me. Yeah. And so I just full throttle everything in, you know, photography. And I never had a job since. And that's basically how it started. Um, but a lot of people don't know that during my uh, journey with photography, I actually fell off. I fell what off. What do you mean you fell off? So I started the photography and everything, and um, I was doing really well. You know, I had one on my first tour and everything, and I, I fell off. I got in a relationship. Oh, <laughs> I the got relationship, a relationship made you fall off. Yeah. I've been there before. I've and been I, there fell, before. I fell off completely. Mm -hmm. and, um, that yeah. shit will, will fuck you up yeah. big time. Yeah, it yeah. will. It's just like you, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. What star sign are you? You said what? What star sign? I'm a Pisces. I'm, I'm a Pisces too. What? When's your birthday? <laughs> March 4th. Dang, that's crazy. I'm February 24th. You know what? That makes sense because in in relationships at times, I get I get like lost in them and I devote so much of myself to that mm. it takes away from my other passions which yeah. is why I asked you that I don't know if focused. it's because I'm a Pisces but yeah I mean shoot I don't know it must be because <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying no when I'm in a relationship I'm just all in but mm -hmm. you know I haven't been in a relationship in a minute so right. obviously I'm like I'm assuming that that wouldn't happen. Yeah, you know, you in hope, my you next relationship you yeah, so. so so you fell off for like how long Oh man, I'm gonna say for so like some years, like three some years, years, some years. Wow. Yeah, I fell, I fell all the way off. Um, I had worked with some big people before I fell off, and relationship, and then just completely fell off. What what and year? What year span was this? Was it like 2000? Dang, that's a good question. I don't even know, honestly. I think it was like 2019, maybe to like. Oh, recent. Oh no no not not, ten, not nineteen my bad I'm thinking of when I was nineteen oh. it was probably when I was nineteen to got you okay like twenty three maybe okay twenty three twenty four um 
And when that relationship ended, I'm like, this is my fuel. I'm oh, like, I'm about to get, motivation. Yeah, I'm like, uh, like y'all about to see my everything. Y'all about to see billboards. Y'all about to see my covers. Da, 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 da. And you made it happen, though. Yeah, I did. Thankfully, you know, yeah. so blessed. So thankful. Yeah, because when you're in a situation like that, I feel like one or two things could happen. You could let it, like, just like fuck you up and you'll you'll dwell on it forever or you can be like you did and just be like i'm gonna just get in my bag like i'm focused on me right you know what exactly. i mean it seems like that's what that, you did that's what yeah i'm like i'm about to get this money honey okay <laughs> and i'm about to go out here Let's and make go. these moves uh-huh. okay you can see me everywhere okay. not me physically but you can see my work <laughs> everywhere okay i love that yeah. so once you got out of that relationship and um you you had that mindset what was like what what started happening for you in your in your field i had to start over again really from scratch basically yeah oh, from manifesting. manifesting and trying to figure out what i want completely um i had to start picturing myself in these positions you mm-hmm. know um and that's where it started for me you know I, like every i think everybody's different of course um something some people i mean obviously i made it happen but some people could really make it happen but my big thing was i just manifested it and yeah i made little moves that made me bigger moves you were you know? were you conscious of of what you're saying at that time though or was was this just like kind of happening for you and you realized it later that you were you no, were I was very a, conscious. You were? Yeah, okay. I was very conscious. I knew where I wanted to go. I knew what I wanted to do. Okay, you know? yeah. And that's the crazy thing. It's like everything I wanted to do, I mean, I have so many more goals, you know, but um, a lot of my goals that I wanted to happen when I tried to figure out what I wanted and everything in 2019, I mean, thankfully, all of that happened, but while it was quarantine. When the pandemic hit. So everything that I wanted in 2019 manifested, but it just happened to be during a time that just wasn't the best time. Yeah. But if if, if it wasn't for the, you know, the whole pandemic and stuff, I can't say that I would have had those opportunities, you know, to to grow. No, not to not to grow, just to do the work that I did, like as far as like music videos. I'm completely foreign to that. Why, Why do you think you wouldn't have been able to do music videos? Well, one, because I don't have, you know, I don't have work behind my name with music oh, videos, yeah. you know, so who's going to want to work with me, yeah. you know, as far as music videos go? Mm-hmm. They can, my pictures vouch for itself, but as far as videos, I don't have nothing that can show people that I've done it. Um, so I think that was my biggest thing. And then, of course, like a lot of magazine companies, and this is, and I'm in no way discrediting my work. Like, I think I, it was going to happen regardless. I know that for a fact, but, um, you know, magazine companies were scared to be around they weren't sending their people to go do these photo shoots and everything so everything was up to me basically i had a lot on my hands during this time so i was just okay this photo shoot this photo shoot this photo shoot like this music video this music video so it was just like back to back to back just work 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 work. because you had so much time on your hands not because we had so much time on our hands but it's because we had plans for the rollout so my life became that rollout Okay. Yeah. So my life became that rollout and um, we just did all that work. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I don't think that I would have done those music videos. I wouldn't have had those opportunities to learn. I could have took it upon myself to do it alone, but music videos wasn't my forte. You Got know what you. I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, then it was a blessing in disguise for you, basically. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. So what's your mindset now heading into 2021? Like what goals do you have now? I want to work with more people for sure. You know, I want to work with more um, artists, actors, models, whatever that may be. Um, I want to do magazines though. I'm you like want to magazines, do magazines, magazines, like spreads, magazines, and spreads covers. covers for sure. Um, I think that's just my biggest, my biggest one right now. It's just magazines because I didn't do as much as I wanted to do, um, but. With multiple people, though, you know, like I was always stuck with one person, which, of course, I'm always grateful and thankful for. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to work with a variety of people. Yeah. Now, you know, 2020, who knows? It's already looking bad. <laughs> I but, know, you right? know. Yeah, 2021. Yeah. Right? Or 2021, yeah. Right? yeah. It feels like it's 2020. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, Dece- it's December 37th right now. You, you know, know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's crazy. It's still 2020. Yeah, well. We don't even know, like you said, like we don't even know when touring's gonna come back. We don't know when like shit's gonna be back to normal. Hopefully it's the summertime, but right. I mean, we, it's out of our control. 
out of our control. I got a friend that's in New Zealand right now, and he said that they completely open. Really? I may be tripping, but he said that they were open and that they're COVID free. <sighs> I'm like, they're doing something right. We gotta like take a, a like a note from whatever these other countries are doing or something. Like that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Because. We That's all what I'm trying saying. to get back. Yeah, this, for sure. The pandemic is like messing up a lot of bags for everybody. A lot. Yeah. So let's go back to to your journey a little bit. We talked about your mindset and some of the successes that you had. Talk about some of the struggles that you had, especially like early on throughout um, the early stages of when you were coming up. What were some of the struggles that you faced? Money. Money. <laughs> Money. Being Money, paid. Honey. I uh, I had to do a lot of free work to get to where I'm at. And, I mean, doing free work costed me, especially because I lived in Marietta. I would drive back and forth, back oh, and forth, Oh, you would drive to forth. L.A.? Yeah, all Shit. the time, consistently, just back and forth, back and forth. And, um, I mean, obviously, that's gas money. So now I'm taking out of my, you know, my wallet. Yeah. And, um, and not getting compensated for it. At all. I would sometimes have to book spaces. But with just my money, you with know, no budget, given? no budget. Damn. That's the thing. And um, th- I think that was just my big, that was one of my biggest struggles was that. And then, of course, trying to make a name for myself and then bringing my work with me so people can see what I can do, you know, because there's so many photographers. There's so yeah, it's many competitive. Photog- yeah, for sure. There's so many photographers in the game. And it's like. I need to work, work, work to make my work better to get where I want to be. So I need my work to speak for me. Yeah. You so know? so how would you bring your work to? Well, I would just put hours in. YouTube, again, how to edit better, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. You know, how to lower the highlight or how to, uh-huh. you know, pick up this saturation or whatever, you know, and just learned it that way. And I just let my work speak for itself, basically. Got you. Yeah. Okay, so you're basically, like, evolving as you were going, yeah, going exactly. on. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got exactly. you. And that's why I knew I had to do free work, though, because I knew I wasn't the best. Okay, and that's other, why you were willing to do it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think other people's mindsets may be different, which is totally fine. This is just, like, a way of how I got to where I'm at, you know? Yeah, and that's the thing. Everybody's journey is so different. I've had yeah. a lot of photographers on this podcast, and each one of them has had a different story. Each one of them has had, like, that either that it moment that just, like, oh, I went on tour with so-and-so, and my mm-hmm. career just went off after that. Mm-hmm. Or some of them are just, like, a slow grind to the mm-hmm. top, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, if you're listening to this, you're creative, don't think that your journey needs to be what what breeze right. is right everybody's is different completely mm-hmm. and i just say follow your heart and whatever you feel is going to get you to that level yep you know exactly so when did you link up with Kal- kalani and how did that happen uh instagram 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 does what? wonders everybody it does instagram does wonders mm-hmm. never be scared to reach out to who you want to work with close mouths don't just, get fed exactly and you just never know people will write you back if they see it mm-hmm. you know exactly um but i met her um i think it was 2014 actually it might have been 13 but we like physically met in 2014 um but we instagram i dm'd her and honestly i didn't even know she was an artist at the time she only had like two songs out at the time so why did you dm her because she looked cool (laughs) she looked super dope i love that yeah she had tattoos and everything at the time that was like she must have been young excuse me um excuse me (laughs) it's all good um yeah, she was young. I think she was like 19 probably when uh-huh. we met, maybe 18. I'm I'm not even sure. I think she might have been 18. Um, but yeah, so I reached out to her on Instagram and I was like, hey, like, I think you look dope. Like, and she probably had 30,000 followers at the time. So my, you know, I, I, my chances of a reply were, <laughs> were pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Um, well, I was would. hoping at least. Mm-hmm. And um, she saw my message and she was like, hey, girl, like your work is fire. Did it like I'm down. Here's my number. Wow. So I'm like, OK, cool. So I texted her. We set up. I think it was two dates, but we didn't didn't happen for whatever reason at the time. I don't remember. Um, and then one day she. um See, man, this all goes back to manifesting, though. The secret. My, the secret, that's what I I'm saying. I gotta watch this, that shit. This, this whole story is just, there's such a long background behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I remember when I found out she was a singer, this was in the midst of our conversation about shooting. I didn't know that she was a singer. So I was like, hey, girl, like, uh, 
so oh, I found out she was a singer, and then I'm like, dang, I'm low key kind of a fan now. Because you right? listen to her music. Because st- I started, I listened to the two songs, and I'm like, dang, she's actually really good. I'm a fan. Like I'm oh, becoming okay. a fan, you know? Yeah. So you so, believed in her at that yeah, point. I believed in her, okay. and then so when I found out she did music, and when I like kept listening to the songs, that's when I realized I was a fan, and then that's when I was like, you know what? I'm gonna work for her, and you know, again, manifested. Manifest, and I'm like, I'm gonna work for her. I'm gonna work for her. I'm gonna work for her. And uh, one day, <clears throat> excuse me, one day she had hit me up. It was like nine in the morning. I still remember, <laughs> like a creep. <laughs> no, you you should remember that honestly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she hit me up at nine in the morning and was like, "Hey, like uh, my label's looking for a new photographer, and um, I see your work and it's really good and blah blah blah. They just want more quality for me because she had a photographer at the time, uh-huh. but I guess she wasn't bringing what you know the label was asking or looking for. I should say." Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm down. Like, I'm 100% down. Let's do it. You know? And she's like, cool. Let's meet at, um, I don't know what it was. Flame Broiler, I think it was. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And it was actually down here. Oh. And I was like, all right, cool. So I met her at Flame Broiler. We talked a little bit. And I was really shy at the time. Really? You know, I'm naturally a shy person. Pisces. So, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I was on mute. Like, uh, <laughs> but um, we met at Flame Broiler and we just had a conversation. It was really brief, though. She didn't say much. She basically just said what she told me on the text was they just were looking for somebody new. And But I think our her thing was like, let's just hang out and see if we vibe type. Yeah. So we hung out the whole day. And then uh, I think it was like two days later, she had asked me if I wanted to go with her to the Bay. And this was going to be like my test run, basically, as far as like video. See, I did start out with video, but not music videos. Just like video. Documentary, like day, day to day. Oh, day to day show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Day to day. So um, I went with her and did a day to day video and I turned that in because they already seen my photos. So I turned that into them and they absolutely loved it. Oh. And so that's how it started. We just wow. started working ever since then. So that's really, you really manifested that. Oh yeah, like... for sure. It's, even as far as I, okay, let me just tell you this story. All right. Oh, tell me, please. Listen, I was sitting on one of these buildings downtown. What do you mean sitting on it? Uh, on the roof with my friend. Okay. And this was after I found out she was a singer and I'm like, I, like, I want to work with her. I'm going to work with her. Now I want to, I'm going. And I pictured myself taking planes. I have never even met the girl in my life yet at this <laughs> point. I pictured myself taking planes like I'm on, like I'm going to a show, I'm going to different cities, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know where I haven't even met her, but I envisioned it. Yeah. And I really had this goal to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I remember I was sitting on one of these rooftops with one of my friends one time and he actually helped me. I would, I give him a lot of credit because he helped me even move down here and like, just really helped me like figure it out because I wasn't from here again, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I remember pointing at a specific building down here, 1010. You know, 1010 oh, yeah, Wilshire. No, 10, yeah, 1010 Wilshire. 10, 10. That, I, that's my, when I told you I live in Wilshire, that was my next door. Uh, oh, wow, that's neighbor. crazy. Yeah, I used to live next, I lived at the building next door to that. Dang, that's know, super yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, so 1010, I remember I was like, I'm going to live there It's one a fancy day. spot. Fancy, mm-hmm. really fancy. Um, I feel like it's kind of ratchet now, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I've only been there a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, we need that sponsorship, Tenton. Right. Actually, we talking shit now, so you right. go. I'm on ratchet <laughs> now. Tenton is still cute. They got cute coffees and you know cookies in the lobby. Uh huh. Um, the rooftop is, is nice. Hit uh-huh. cute, love it. It's a vibe up yeah. there. Most um, but I remember sitting on the rooftop and we were looking at the skyline, and I was like, I'm gonna live in that building one day. I'm gonna live in that building one day. Now, fast forward to me and her finally meeting, and I didn't realize this until I moved into that building. So fast forward to me and her meeting, I go to Oakland with her and maybe it was like a weekend and I'm like, girl, I got to move back home for whatever reason. Right. And she's like, well, you could just come live with me. And I'm like, OK, this is like a week in of me knowing wow. her. Wow. And I'm like, OK, I'm just going to do it. You know, yeah. I'm young. I'm just going to do it. I'm just trying to follow my dreams. Like, uh-huh, I'm making it happen. Not? So yeah. I was like, okay, cool. So I ended up moving in. And when I get there, it's 1010. And it's that same building when I was on a rooftop. So she lived there. She lived there for, I, I don't know how long she lived there. But when I lived there with her, it was for like six months. And then we finally left. And oh, we moved somewhere else. Wow. But it's just that story. I didn't even know her. And I was like, I'm going to live in that building. And I ended up living in that building with her. Damn. So... That's yeah. crazy. You can't really make up. You can't like write yeah. shit like that. No, for sure. And that's why I'm like manifesting like all of that law of attraction. Like that's my biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Like I believe it's so real. Yeah. A lot of people don't think it's real, but well, it's real. a lot of people don't try it. I, I believe that's it. what it is. A lot of people don't put it to work. Mm-hmm. That's what they it don't is. practice. Yeah. Practice what what it is. Yeah. I think it's important too to 
to have that law of attraction and manifest things, but then to work towards it too. You know what I mean? Because you can manifest the hell out of something. You could be like, I could sit here and be like, yo, I'm going to become president in 2024 and believe right. the fuck out of it. <laughs> but if I don't start campaigning, if I don't right. start making like moves to, right. to do that, I'm not, it's not going to work. So Right. And just envisioning it though. You know, picturing mm-hmm. yourself, like all those yeah, pictures that true. I had. And I'm like, I'm, I pictured myself flying with this girl and I pictured me traveling to all these places and it happened and I haven't even met her yet. You know? <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah. for, the, for it to happen, I was like, dang, this is real. You got to be able to see yourself exactly. in that situation, exactly. right? Exactly. So I'm like, this is real. Uh huh. And I just apply it. It's my, it's my everyday situation now. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and shout out to her for taking a chance on you oh, too. Yeah, you know for what sure. I mean? Always that's, grateful. Thank, thank you. Kalani. Yeah. Shout out thank to Kalani. Right. That's, that's, that's you, dope. Girl. You know what? Let's uh, we're gonna do something real quick. All right. I gotta let me let me pull up the laptop. So I want to talk about your creative process behind some of these shots and just really just talk about like what your your thought process behind it was. Let's you know? do it. I'm here for it. Okay. So we have this infamous Kalani album cover, which is like a masterpiece. Yes. So what type of planning went into this shoot? And if you're listening to this, I'm going to put this up on the screen. What type of planning went into this? And what was your whole creative process behind this? Well, you know what is so crazy? Uh, We didn't know what we were going to do for the cover anymore. We had this whole idea... um, and when the pandemic hit, we're just like, well, we can't do that, you know, because yeah. everything was closed down. Um, and I just remember one day she was just like, let's shoot the cover in my backyard. And I'm like, OK, like that'd be fire. And then it, as we were standing there by that wall, she's like, I want it to to be like I'm looking over like we know one side is looking good and clean and I'm watering the floor and whatever. I have this hose and I'm, it's nice. And on the other side, it's disaster. Wow. And we didn't even realize that it corresponded with what's going on. Cause this was obviously 2020. We didn't realize uh-huh. that until maybe a little bit before the album came out. We're like, dang, this actually resonates. With so what's after going on. you, th- it was completed and you and you already like knew that we were going to use it. The front was completed. We knew what we wanted to do for the back, but we d- couldn't like, we couldn't really see it yet. Like she saw it, but we didn't know how we were going to put it together. But basically. you didn't make it knowing that it's going to resonate yeah, with no, the times. No, 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 no. That's we another just, like yeah. manifestation yeah. type thing. Well, we did it. We made it while it was happening, but we, well, I didn't realize that it was resonating with what's going on right now. With, you know, 2020 oh. pandemic. Like I was like, wait, girl, this actually like it makes so much sense, especially for what's going on. And she's like, yeah, girl, like I know, like that's crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, like you it know, just worked crazy. out. Yeah, it worked out for sure. Um, but we were in her backyard, and I was. She was just like, okay, well, I'm gonna stand on this chair, and I'm like. I'm like, actually, let's, yeah, let's use this little, uh, it was just like a regular chair. And I'm like, let's use this little, whatever this kind of chair is. Yeah, wool thing, whatever that is. Yeah, little (laughs) bamboo stickish, (laughs) woolish thingy, majigger, right? Yeah. So I'm like, let's use this. So I like moved that out the way. I like, there was all kind of uh, leaves and stuff, brushed it. You know, I've got a broom, I'm over here brushing everything. And then I actually cleaned the concrete before and let it dry before we actually shot the cover. I love that. I love how simplistic it is. (sighs) Yeah, right. Um, And then uh, she got up there, she looked over the wall. Maybe took like 10 photos of it. I showed it to her and I'm like, you know what? What if we add the water hose? The water hose will be tight and just have the water running. And she was like, okay, yeah, like, let's try it, blah, blah, blah. So then she goes, I give her the hose and she's standing up there. And then I'm like, okay, well, we only have one. We don't have one chance. But in that moment, we were like, okay, well, we only have one chance to get this because the sun was going almost about to go down for one. And for two, I was like. The floor is going to get all wet. Because <laughs> the and water is going to be yeah, flooding Yeah, exactly. Everybody. So I'm like, we really got to okay. just snap, 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 snap. And then hopefully one of those is it. Snap, 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 snap. We go inside. And I, it's crazy because the edit that came behind it, like the colors and everything, it just instantly came to me. Instantly. Like I probably got the colors right within 20 to 30 minutes. Why, why do you think that is? What, what is it? What about it like spoke to you? Um, honestly, I'm not really sure what spoke to me, but I was excited 
over it. And when I'm excited over my projects and when I feel passionate about it and I, I could really get into it, you know, and I could really sit there and play with the colors really quickly. I have a lot of like presets that I have and then like I'll just adjust everything like you, on the right side. You subliminally, subliminally knew that you were going for yeah. that look. Yeah, okay. I knew exactly like what I wanted. There wasn't anything like specific that made me go for that look. It's just really for me. It's like what I what my eye finds attractive to this like setting basically. Okay. So I just got this edit, did all my adjustments, everything, everything like made, made it my own, of course. And then I was like, and she was sitting next to me and, but she wasn't watching me edit though. And I was like, okay, how do you feel about this? And then I show her the thing and she's like, that's fire. Love it. Like first, first time, like I love it. And I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. Like I didn't, she didn't want me to change anything or anything. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then, um, maybe a week later we shot the back. And that was it. That was the, that's the story behind the front cover. Wow. Yeah. That's so dope. Yeah. And like I told you, I'm a big fan of simplicity. So yeah. the fact that you oh, guys same. just same. did that, like in your in the back in her backyard by yourselves, mm-hmm. I love that story. Yeah. That's dope. All right. Next one. Um, we got Kalani in a lingerie piece in a baby blue room. Talk about the planning that went to this and the whole creative process for it. So, Savage Fenty shoot. Um, I was kind of just looking for a vibe that I feel like they would like for their shoots. I know they can, they can be very like neonish and like very vibranty or whatever. And mm-hmm. I was like, but you know, if I put her in this type of setting, this vintage looking type of situation, I think it could be cool. So I just went on Pierce Space and uh, her assistant actually sent me the outfits that um, she was shooting before beforehand before I booked anything. And I went on Peer Space and I'm looking, I'm looking, and I knew I wanted it to be vintagey and with like fur and stuff. Like this whole, there's like another set where there's like fur and stuff. But I don't think we actually ever released them. Whoops. <laughs> well, cut but, that out. Uh, right. <laughs> I mean, you could put it in. It's good. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, I was on Peer Space and I'm like, oh, this is the perfect, uh, the perfect space. And then I just got it. And then of course, again, it, the same thing always comes back down to my. Uh, the editing is just if I'm super excited about it, I'll really take my time and work on it. But it's so crazy because it instantly comes to me. Yeah. It, it doesn't take me hours or days. Like if I'm really excited about a project that I'm working on. Just get on, it done. Get it done quick. But not because I'm rushing it, because I actually have the passion of like editing and I'm like, oh, this is fire. Yeah. And you just you know? know. And I just know. That's exactly. something like that is kind of like unteachable because yeah. like I think a lot of people are constantly looking for like what they can do to like let's say there's like a, a photographer who's like a big fan of you and they're just like how do i make my work like breeze you know what i right. mean but sometimes it's just like you like you just explain it's like that yeah that it factor that you can't really explain exactly. you know? it's just like your vision you know mm-hmm. and most of it is just my eye what i think looks cool and what i think looks cool might not look cool to you or the next person or yeah. the next person or the next person i always forget to remind myself that because that can also be the biggest critic of my work you really? know I could really I mean I have so many photos that I have not dropped just because I'm a huge critic on it all so I'm like yeah and I think that that's what makes like an artist an artist you know what I mean because everybody has their different style and there's mm-hmm. other photographers that have what you said but it just comes out different like mm-hmm. they have a different style and that's what makes it like what it is and that's what right. makes your style what it is whatever that is you know exactly so They're what are some places that. that photography has taken you to like oh, man. travel wise around the world around um, the world I mean there's still a lot of places that I want to go but I, hey my time will come you know mm-hmm. I'm not rushing it I know it's going to happen I just don't know when but you know when it happens it happens yeah. um, as far as uh, around the world I mean I've been to Europe I've been to uh, where else have I been I mean a good, a good portion of Europe like where else have I been all of United States literally like every state you can think of <laughs> Um, Do you have any like crazy touring stories or like? Oh my god! <laughs> what are some you can share with me that that, that won't get nobody in trouble? Um, you know what? I have this one story. <laughs> it was when I, we were on tour. Uh, it was a while ago though. It was with when we went to GEZ. We were on a GEZ tour. This was our first tour ever, and there was this girl. <laughs> there was this girl. Um, we were in Chicago. And I remember um, we were in we were at the venue in Chicago and at the venue in Chicago, they're very 
very strict on like underage drinking so they don't care if you're working there or not like if you're drinking and you're an artist they'll probably kick you out and you're not going to perform like they're that strict yeah so at the time I think I was like 20 I think my birthday was coming up and this girl had came to the show and she's like hey like let me get you a drink and I was like okay so uh but I knew the girl I didn't know her like that but it was my first time meeting her so you. you know it was just one of those like whatever so I'm like okay cool you know buy me a drink you know whatever so she gives me a drink and I'm drinking and then they come up and they ID me and I'm like freak like you know I'm like our show's about to start like you know I can't go da 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 and we basically I get kicked out long story short I get kicked out out. I got kicked out I wasn't allowed to go back in um and then I ended up telling because you know we made friends with everybody and like the GEZ and this is a time when we were only on a sprinter so and it was snowing at that so i'm like i can't oh, be in a shit. sprinter for two hours or three hours like it's gonna be freezing you yeah. know so i had talked to jeezy's people um and i was like hey like can i uh you know or actually i think it was kaylani's manager asked them for me and was like can brie go stay in your guys's bus just until you know whatever she got kicked out he explained everything and they're like yeah of course da, da, da. so um, I get kicked out. I say goodbye to the girl, right? I'm like, I got to go back to work, you know? And yeah. I'm, I'm totally lying because I can't even go back in the, the venue. So then after that, I go on the bus and I'm just sitting there doing my work. And then some girls come and or she comes, knocks on the door. And it's like, I know Bree's in there. Like, I want to talk to Bree. Da, 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 da. Right? And I mind you, I don't know the girl like that. Like, we're not like, Yeah, you, know? you just barely met. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I'm not here. I'm like, tell her I'm not here. Right? I'm like, I'm going to go hide in the back of the bus. Right? <laughs> so I go in the back of the bus. He opens the door. And he's like, she's not here. You know? And I think she was on something, to be honest. Really? Because she was, it was just weird. When you hear the situation, you're like, what? So she looks in the bus, doesn't see me, of course, because I'm hiding. And then I come back out when she leaves. And I'm sitting down. And I'm like... The door is behind me, and I'm sitting on, you know, where the little table is, and I'm, like, editing my photos, and then the door knocks again, and then it's these two random girls, right? And my friend answers the door, and they're like, can I use your bathroom? Like, I really have to go to the bathroom and blah, blah, blah. So he's like, yeah, sure, like, you know, whatever. So he, they, go, they go on the bus, they pass me, and as they pass me, I realize that those are her friends, what? So I'm like, what are they doing here? Like, you know, so then when they come back out, they see me. We make eye contact and then they leave or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, that's crazy. Like, her, that was her friends that just came up yeah. in here, you know? Like, and he's like, it was. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. So then I'm like editing more. And then like 10 minutes later, all you hear is banging on the door with like all three of them. It's what? all three of them banging on the door. They talk about, I know she's in there. Like, I know she's in there. So I'm like, dang, like. I'm tripping. What do I do? You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh my You're God. You're stuck. Yeah, I'm like, I'm <laughs> stuck. Like, what am I going to do? And then after that, they basically, uh, my friend opens the door and she's like, they're like, she's not in here and blah, blah, blah. So then they had like an after party situation on the bus or whatever. And these two girls come in and I'm sitting, cause I'm still waiting for my team. Well, the team that I was working with to come out so I could leave the bus, you know, and go in the sprinter, but they were like packing up whatever, whatever. So I had to stay in the bus for a minute. And so these two girls come on, on the bus and they sit next to me and they're like I'm overhearing their conversation and I'm and they're like yeah like it's just so crazy I can't believe that girl one was trying to fight me like she thought I was that girl and I like I didn't even know that girl and then the other girl was like I know girl that's so crazy like I would have had your back if anything happened (laughs) and blah 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 and I'm like was the girl I, I was like I'm sorry for eavesdropping but is the girl that y'all talking about she got two buns on the top of her head and they're like yes like they're like it's for some girl she said that oh, her girlfriend shit. was in here and all kind what? of stuff and I'm like what like as I'm talking to them I kid <laughs> you not as I'm talking to them I look to my right and she's standing there listening st- she's staring at me with her arms crossed like just looking she at me like this fade. ready and i'm like what i look at her and i'm like oh shit. this is kind of crazy you know i'm like dang she i don't know she kind of looked possessed low key it was, it was scary <laughs> was, she, she looked like she was awesome there right it, yeah, yeah for sure but i mean she was just standing there i mean who does that with a bunch of people around and you're just staring at one person yeah i feel like she didn't even blink like i'm like what the freak you know uh-huh so she basically uh i'm like okay it's my friend saw her and was like okay you gotta go you gotta go you gotta go kicked off the bus and then um i go in the sprinter she's gone don't see her and then i go in the sprinter and then i'm talking to kaylani and i'm like girl like i can't let this girl got me kicked 
out like this she i told her basically what happened you know She's like, dang, that's crazy girl. Because we were going to an after party. She's like, dang, that's crazy girl. Like, imagine she show up at the after party. And mind you, this play, the after party was like a, you know, it was like a low key situation. Like, it wasn't mm-hmm. really like a club. It was more so like a, a warehouse. Um, so we're sitting there and I'm and I'm like, dang, that would be crazy, you know. So I, we get to the after party and not I'm over here talking. About it yeah, anymore. not even thinking about it. And I'm like, dang, that's crazy. Whatever, whatever. So now we're sitting in this like little like nook part. And then there's like a door that's right next to us. And we're sitting with the girls and we're all talking and then all of a sudden she walks in and walks past me. And I'm like, oh, girl, what? I'm no like, way. yes, I'm like, girl, why <laughs> oh, is this girl here right now? Like, girl, you was a plane, like she's right there. And she's like, no way, like that's so crazy. So then the girl comes up to me and I'm not trying to talk to her because why would you want to talk to her? Why would I want to talk to her? But yeah. also, at the, I'm like, I'm young, you know? So, I, of mm-hmm. course, my mindset is, girl, you weird, you know? I mean, it wouldn't be that now because I'd be like, girl, what's up? Like, yeah. you had a problem? Like, what's going on? <laughs> you know? But, but back then, I was like, mute. I want to talk to you. Like, I'm going to ignore you. Act like you're not here type. Got you. So, I'm sitting there. And she comes up to me, and she's trying to talk to me, and I'm like not making eye contact, but I'm like looking to my left, looking to my right, looking to my left, looking to, and she's just right here in my face. <laughs> right? So I'm just like, you know, like, and then was she with anybody or no, was she just she by, was herself? by herself? Like for every sequence alone. of these events, she alone. Was by- alone what the fuck so i'm like what the heck like you know i'm left right left right and then kaylani comes and she sits on my lap now at this point i'm like girl i need you to have my back like i need you to just act like we're together you know like just act like we're together and she's like okay like i got you you know so now she's kaylani sitting on my lap and the girl is literally like let's just say this is kaylani's face and my face is back here like when the girl would go this way kaylani would move her face with her so the girl was really trying to talk to me and was really trying, you know, just ignoring Kaylani. But Kaylani was like, was she on you know, some like, like, like trying to hit on you type shit? Or was she I on some know. like other shit? I have no idea. I can't even tell you. I have no idea <laughs> what, what she was fuck? on. So she's like this. And Kaylani's like following her, you know, mimicking <laughs> her. Like, but it's a joke to her, you know? So yeah. she's like, you know, whatever. And then, um, having fun with it. yeah, basically. And then after that, um, she leaves. The girl get the girl gets kicked out of that spot, and then we go to a different spot. We go to act like an actual club. The after after party. After after party, <laughs> okay. right? Exactly. Tour life. So we go to the after after party, and we go to this uh, club situation. And I'm sitting. I'm elevated, like really elevated. Um, so like, if you were to walk, like if you were to stand up, like there people could sit down on the ledge, so you would see people sitting of like you know you're at your height basically so i was sitting down i was in, like in this little booth area and so when people were walking by whatever like i can look down at them walking or whatever and um she, so i'm talking to my friends i'm talking to them she comes up to me and she puts her hand all in my back like just that same girl yes the same girl so she shows up at the same place right that's what? crazy i'm like how is she following again? us again so <laughs> she puts her hand up my back and i'm like what the heck i was like you know i jumped a little bit because i'm like what the hell look back and i'm like what is going on right so then I'm like, girl, this is so weird. So then I tell all my friends, and I'm like, girl, look, she's right here again. She had to be following you. Had to have. Right? Had to have. Yeah. She got kicked out of two places already. There's no there's no way it's that much of coincidence no at way. all. But she was following you. For sure. Mm-hmm. For, <laughs> hands down. And um, after that, I'm like, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. Right? Oh, damn. I go to the bathroom by myself. Oh, before I went to the bathroom, though, Kaylani tapped me and she's like, girl, look at her. She's over there standing in the corner looking at you. And I promise you again, that same oh my God. just staring at me situation from way across the club. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, this is crazy. So then um, I'm like, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. Hopefully I can sneak over there without her seeing me. You know? yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom real quick. I promise you. It was like a movie type. Like, it's like one of those scenes where they like follow you and then they push you against the wall and then they start kissing you. I swear to God, right? So she threw me against the wall, pecked me a little bit, and I'm like, girl, what? Like, what is going on? You know, because it was that quick to where like I couldn't even be like, you know, it was like pushed you against the wall, smacking on you. She rapey type. Rapey type. (sighs) But the thing is, I thought she was cool before all this. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. but, but, yeah, I don't know. So was she the one that bought you a drink? Yes, that was her. This okay. Is the same girl. Yeah. What the fuck? So then after that, 
I leave, I go tell my friends, whatever. So then we go back to where we were, the place before we went to the bigger party, right? We the after, after party. We went back to the other place. We go back to the other place and she shows up again. She oh my walks God, through no the way. door again, I swear to God. And what? then she walks through the door and then Caroline's like, girl, just go talk to her, you know? And honestly, I don't even remember. That. At that point, I think I was like kind of drunk. So I don't yeah. even remember the conversation of how that went. But then I remember but you her went to leaving. go talk to her. Yeah, I went okay. to go talk to her. I do remember that, but I don't remember what we talked about. Like, I was just like, yeah, this is weird type, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. And that was pretty much it. That was like, that's one story, but that's, a, that's the craziest one for me, <laughs> you know, my like, experience. That's a crazy sequence of events yeah. that happened. I'm like, like girl, stop following me. <laughs> she probably follows you on IG like, now or something. She probably do. And she probably got my GPS. She probably got <laughs> my location. She probably know where I live. Yo, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I be having nightmares like about some people, shit like people that. People be interested. No, really mm-hmm. though. Like people go the extra mile. Like, I don't know if you ever had like a crazy ex or anything before, but like, like people get pretty like attached and, and oh, like man. loony loony type i can't even explain it like that uh-huh. that's the looniest i've ever came close to <laughs> but thank god that's the only situation what city so, was that in that was in chicago, that was chicago. yeah that okay. was in chicago yeah, you gotta watch out when you go to chicago right I'm like, hey, girl. <laughs> yeah. she probably got tabs on me 100 percent. crazy yeah. do you ever get so i'm sure you got plenty of other stories from, from tours do you do you get Tour, post-tour depression when you come back from from tours because i know it's obviously such a different life well i've actually only been on one tour well two because the that one and then we went to europe um but the times that i did come back from tour mm-hmm. i now that i look back at it i didn't think so at the time but now that i look back at it i think i definitely became a little uh i don't want to say depressed but i definitely became a little i guess sad I mean, I don't know if sad and depressed is, is, I wouldn't call it the same thing personally, but yeah, I just became a little down. I wasn't okay. depressed though. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, oh, like I'm bored and like, I don't know what to do. Like, yeah. Cause it's such a different it's lifestyle. Hard, yeah. Right? And then it's hard to like jump back into what I want to do, you know, but like originally what I want to do, which is like the magazines and stuff and like being, you know, setting up shoots. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, like I, I kind of just lose not lose how to do it, but I just kind of lose, like, the focus of doing it when I come back. Okay. I'm like, okay, now I'm just bored. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I know what to do, but I just don't do it. I yeah. don't have the strength to do it. The strength? The strength. What do you mean the strength? The, like, I don't have the willpower to go open my laptop or go on my phone and email people and ask them if they want to shoot. It? And then I look up all these photos so I can create a mood board. And, like, I just don't have oh, the strength the things to you do. normally do. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm so down but I'm not depressed. I don't know if that makes sense. No, no, it does. And the reason why I ask is because my homie Brian, who's a fire photographer from uh, Toronto, he talked about that, like having uh-huh. post-tour depression after coming back from tour. Uh-huh. And like, it's just that you're, like you like you explain, you're just down mm-hmm. and you can't explain why. Mm-hmm. It's like a weird yeah, feeling that exactly. he couldn't explain. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, I know what I need to do, but I don't feel like doing it. Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean by like, I don't have the strength. Like it's I like just, an acclimation period, right? Yeah, like you exactly, gotta exactly. work your work way your back way, in. Yep, exactly. Work it up. Yeah. But you know that only lasts for so long. It's not too long. You know? <laughs> yeah. You gotta work your way out of it. For sure. And it'll go away. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Well, hopefully more tours come to you in 2021, mm-hmm. 2022, right? Whenever, <laughs> whenever, whenever t- we're allowed <laughs> to do it again. Hopefully it comes to me. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Whenever. Uh, this um simulation's over right the simulation <laughs> that's what it really is you be watching a uh, black mirror i mm-hmm. feel like we're in a black mirror episode Yo, right now black mirror season six so, oh, right that's exactly. what it is that's this what this whole is thing. they probably recording it too we uh, don't yep. even know yep that's crazy <laughs> that I, I saw some tweet that said uh like oh how thoughtful of, of netflix they wanted us to experience the next <laughs> season of black <laughs> instead, of, of <laughs> instead of watching oh, it oh shoot yeah. that's crazy i know that's what it feel like it really do feel like that but i mean like. that vaccine come out like i'm oh, happy i'm not that taking that you're you not taking, taking that? that i'm happy that it's coming out because at least like the government's gonna be like all right it's your choice now mm-hmm. so they can start like letting shit happen you know mm-hmm. what i mean because now it's like our right, if we want to risk it we could risk it mm-hmm. but it's out there so right. it's like our choice now you know what i mean right. Are you going to take it? I don't know yet. I haven't made that decision. Oh, I think I will just because I'm such a fuck it person that I don't put that much thought into it. So this vaccine is kind of like the same though, right? It's almost like as if 
It's as if you you go and get the flu shot. They pretty much inject you with the flu, so you get the flu, exactly. and your body can fight it off. Yeah, like so, it, they're basically giving you the Rona. See, but that's my thing. Is like you might as well just get the Rona on its own when you get it, and you know what I mean. And then you gonna be organic. Good. Yeah, exactly. that's an organic exactly vaccine. Organic vaccine. Yeah, exactly. I feel it. I guess you can do whatever way you want to do it. Right. Yeah, that's true. Whatever makes you, people feel more comfortable. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're going to see me climbing on the walls and shit. (laughs) Become Spider-Man. You're going to out of here. I'm like... Yeah, get some powers and shit. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm excited for things to get back to normal because it's hard being cooped up in here. You know what I mean? And we live in LA, so... It's just... Today, I didn't do anything besides pick up some stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's all because of the Rona. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't mm. even go out to eat with my friends. Like, I know we can always make alternatives, but it's just like, dang, like, yeah. how many times I got to make alternatives? I'm trying to go sit at a nice restaurant with my girls and yeah. be like, yeah. Not, stop, it, stop talk, asking talk. too much. Just yeah, want to eat a restaurant. You know what I'm yeah. I don't know, though. And especially out here in LA, downtown LA. And the worst part about it, because you live not too far from me, like, mm-hmm. we're spoiled with these, like, nice restaurants oh, yeah. and mm-hmm. all this all these fun activities fun activities yeah and it's like a tease because we live close to all this shit and we gotta look at it but we can't Mm -hmm. go there it's not like living outside the city you know what i mean and you you know it's crazy i don't know if you noticed but excuse me things are still boarded up oh yeah they are Mm -hmm. they are boarded up still i wonder why i've been thinking about they know something we don't that's what i'm thinking (laughs) that's what i was i'm like they gotta know something but yeah they definitely still boarded up more on like this side yeah when all that capital shit happened the choppers were out really? like yeah there were like that was yesterday right mm, i don't know i think what, that was two days, before, ago? two days ago two i think ago. yeah what was i doing two days ago <laughs> i what remember reading it and stuff ago? i don't even know to be honest i have the worst memory ever so <laughs> really the fact that i was even able to hear to sit here and talk to you about all this <laughs> stuff like i'm like how i do this um, hey you're just forward thinking you're right yeah, you're just pushing so. forward dang what was i doing two days ago i don't know <laughs> What were you doing two days ago? That's crazy. I think I was babysitting. Oh, I was hanging out with my friend CJ. Okay. Okay, shout out to CJ. Yeah, shout out to CJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she don't remember, but like, (laughs) you guys hung out. Yeah, dang, looks like he pinned this. (laughs) It's all good. What advice would you have for any young creatives or photographers who are looking to, like, make a name for themselves or possibly get to, like, where you're at? Put that work in. That's Put that my work thing. In. Put that work in. Learn. I think m- the biggest thing is learning. Like, there's so much learning <laughs> to do when it comes to photography. Like, it's more than just, you know, picking up a camera and taking pictures. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? There's, like, manual settings that you want to work with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's, like, the editing. It all comes down to angles, editing, and, dang, I had three. I remember I, I, remember I tweeted it a while ago. I forget what it is. It's angles, editing, and dang angles editing angles editing dang i I just tweeted it like not too long ago angles editing when i figure it out i'll comment okay yeah or search for her twitter what's your twitter what's your at brianna elise brianna elise brianna elise okay yeah we'll we'll, we'll find it yes yes. plug it i'm gonna actually once you find it, I'm gonna put it on the screen right, so we yeah. know what you're talking about. I'm literally about. gonna <laughs> screenshot it and send it to you as soon as I get home. I got you. <laughs> so, so you said angles, angles, editing, and but the angles and the editing part. Why are those so important? Because I feel like it's really important to know. I mean, it depends on what you're shooting. Personally, I shoot people, so for me, uh, I'm like angles. Angles is really important because you have to know your subjects, like face. You know, I mean, the first few 20 minutes, you might not get it. You might, you're still, you got to change the angles to see what you, what looks best. And me, I like shooting to what I like to see, you know? So if I'm shooting somebody from below and I think they look really good from below, I'm probably going to get the lower angles or, I mean, also it just depends on the concept too as well. But like, I'm going to try to stick to what I think looks how, like what I think you look good at, what I think the that's position your job. that you look yeah. good at. Exactly. So that's why angles is really important. You can't just point you. Know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like you can't just whoop. And um the editing is also very important. Very, very important. Um you have this photo that's just completely bland. And then the editing, you just take it up a notch. You edit that thing, right? You know what I'm saying? But also there is no yeah. right to, way to editing. I'll tell you that there is no uh, rules 
to photography. Okay. Whatever I, that's my personal belief. You know, whatever I feel, if somebody tells me, no, do it this way, do it this way, or your light meter has to be this whatever, and then th- your lighting has to face this way, like, I'm not into the proper stuff. Okay. I'm into, I'm going to put Thinking outside the, the box. light where I like it. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm going to put my, my ISO where I like it. That's you know dope. what I'm saying? Yeah. But also that depends on the mood board that I have set and stuff. Do so. you think that's because everybody's taste is subjective? You know what I mean? Yeah, like 100%. what looks good. Like you said earlier, what looks too good to me may not look good to exactly. you. Exactly. Vice versa. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm sure there's people out there that don't think my work is good. And that's fine. But I know my work <laughs> is good. So, you know, I'm going to keep pushing with my work. She said. Okay. Yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, so, so it's really just what you see okay i feel like you know it's uh-huh. no rules it's really what you like you know but also man how do i also you have to like know you just have to know and, and like what you said earlier like it's just so hard to explain that knowing factor mm-hmm. you know what i mean like you have to know what is like dang this is fire because you could use like this crazy crazy edit and think it's tight whoops sorry ah you're good you're <laughs> you know good, I you're good. Keep going. <laughs> she put the eye down <laughs> real quick too <laughs> let me flip my phone over it's just yeah it's just that though it's like it's 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 having the eye hard to explain yeah it's it's hard to explain it's practice too you know you're not gonna get it you may, you may, you could be that person that's just really talented with it and you just pick up the camera, you just know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But also if you, you don't know what you're doing but you really want to learn, just put in the work, you know, put in the hours. Like that's how you're going to learn. Look up YouTube videos or even just download the programs that you need or that you think you need and just play with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. how it was for me as far as editing. Like I would just play with all the colors, everything. And then I figured it out obviously because, you know, put in the hours and the time and like, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, what was your question again? It the was advice? Not, not you answered it basically. Oh, yeah, okay. like advice that you have for for young photographers or creatives um, that are looking to like level up in their oh, careers. Oh yeah, and don't be scared to reach out. Don't be scared to reach out to people you want to work with. I think that's the biggest thing because I've definitely reached out to people that I never thought I'd get a reply from in a million years. You know what I'm saying? So don't be scared to reach out. Yeah. And to add on to that, if you think about it, it's like you could even it's even a numbers and odds odds game Mm -hmm. because if you hit up, let's say, 100 people, right? Of, mm-hmm. of of artists that you admire and only 10 of them get back to you mm-hmm. that's still 10 that you would have never gotten exactly. if you never said shit exactly right? yeah for yeah. sure 100 percent. and most of the time i'm trying to be better at uh presenting mood boards before i reach out now before i wouldn't because like you know whatever but um now i want to be a little bit more um i mean i would suggest it for anybody that's reaching out to somebody is just to have a mood board ready you know what i'm saying because it's like you reach out to somebody there's this has happened to me so many times where i reach out to somebody and they're like okay yeah send a mood board over and i'm like what am i gonna do for this (laughs) it's not ready yet yeah yeah, it's not ready i gotta go on pin i got a lot of my inspiration pictures on pinterest that's what i was gonna ask you next yeah where you draw your inspiration from yeah definitely pinterest um really just pinterest to be honest i go on there and i'll just like do like this wine got me burping. <laughs> Excuse she on me. A new, she on a different level right now. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I go on Pinterest and I'll just look up like female editorial or just editorial shoot. And then a bunch of pictures will just pop up. And then I'll just look. I pay attention to everything, though. Like I'll pay attention to the sets that are being used. Even. OK, let's just say this is a whole concept that i'm not interested in as far as like the um clothing and the makeup and hair and whatever but the background looks fire i will grab that image still and put it on my mood board as like set design just so you know that it's not the clothes we're just like this is the set that i like and then i'll just add like other images like that i find along the way that i think will also add to the set i love it so you're taking little tidbits of what you like exactly and then i'll be like okay this is gonna go here and as i'm doing that though in my mind i'm like okay so i'm gonna do this with this like and on this set i'm gonna go get this background so i'm just now at this point when i'm on pinterest i'm looking for things that i already have in my mind yeah you get what i'm saying so i like i'll find the base on pinterest or sometimes the base will just come to my mind i'm like dang this this would be fire for her if she did whatever and i'll have the base but usually nine times out of ten well 
not nine out of ten, not nine out of ten, but you know, I find the base, and then from there, I have it in my mind what I want to see with this model, and yeah. then I'll just or the the talent, and I'll just now go on Pinterest and find as close as possible to what I see in my head. You're a visionary. Yeah, Damn. basically. So, yeah, yeah because that, what you, the process that you explained is really similar to music, you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's kind of like sampling shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you hear shit that you like from, like, a certain track, and that's yeah. why people sample so many old soul, mm -hmm. soulful classics, mm -hmm. because they're taking little little beat packs or, like, drum drums from, like, certain exactly. like, like just, tracks yeah, and putting exactly. it together. And just and, making one. And it's crazy, because mm -hmm. as they're doing it, I'm sure they know what they want to hear. Yeah. You know? So they're like, okay, I'm going to... Oh, I remember this song. Let me go get this. Like this would, you know what I'm saying? And you saying? can't, like, you can't teach it because it's just your it's in mind. Your head. Like, yeah, exactly. Working it's in ways in you can't head. explain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just in the head. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, it's obtainable though. I don't yeah. think it's not for anybody that doesn't. I think that you know, I think you can learn it. To be honest, I don't think it's like unlike unlearnable. What's exactly. Like I don't think you can't do it. Yeah. Do you think that? confidence plays a big role into in it too because now you obviously you know your work's fire you're confident in what you can do and a lot of other people are too but in the beginning when you were first starting off you would would you say that you may not have had that confidence at first to know that your work was fire or, or have you always had that um i think i've always had the confidence to be honest, I think, I mean, now looking back at it, I, I, I can look at my, I have actually looked back at my first two, I don't know, not even two, like a good handful of like photo shoots that I've done. And I'm like, dang, this is trash. Oh, really? I'm like, but at the time that I was editing it and when I finished it, I was like, this is fire. Yeah. This is it. You know what I'm saying? But then I look back and I'm like, dang, what was I thinking? Like, <laughs> it's because you, know? you evolved. Yeah, exactly. Like a creator, basically. Exactly. And I'm like, what was I thinking? You know what I'm saying? I'll be so, doing the same shit for these podcasts. Like, yeah. I'll and, be looking back 20, 30 episodes ago, like, at the time, I was like, yo, I was saying some real shit. Exactly. And then I look back at it now, like, what the fuck was you right. saying, Levi? Like, right. That's you hilarious. Know? Um, but yeah, I think I've always had the confidence for that. You think you so? I, th I think I've always had the confidence. But again, when I look back, I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I feel you. Okay, so um, we're going to end this pretty soon here. But where can people follow you if they want to like continue to watch your journey and Ooh. on socials and y'all can follow me on instagram you know what i'm saying the ig it's IG. at brie elise um b-r-i-a-l-y-s-s-e um and then i don't really post on twitter so y'all can follow me if you want to on there <laughs> but brianna elise with two n's so b-r-i-a-n-n-a -N -N -A, okay elise. um Oh, and then my website, brandelise.com. Oh, you, you got a website? Yeah, I got a website. Hell yeah. yeah. You, got, you put, got all your work on there? I put my best work on there. The, okay, the work whatever. that I absolutely am just like, whoa, I love this. So I put, you got <laughs> all my best then. pictures. Yeah, exactly. That's on that hub. On that website. So Hell yeah. that's about it. Dope. Well, I'm, I'm excited to continue to watch your journey. And Thank you. And I'm, I'm a big fan of your work. So Thank you got me you in your so corner. Much. I'm always going to be rooting for what you're doing. Keep, keep doing what you're doing. And everybody, if you're listening, watch The Secret. Because I'm about to watch, watch it. Watch it. <laughs> It'll change your life, I promise. Hell yeah. All right, from Ambiance, this is Levi, Bree. Thank you so much, Levi and Ambiance. Yup, we out. See y'all later. Peace.